everyone. This is Melissa Arma with the StockSwish.com, and I'm reviewing the market here today. I'm in the room, and I was explaining we're going over the market, that the market's a long here today. I actually called the market long. Is anyone in this call? I said you could be in this long, and actually it's holding, and it will hold today. I snagged it through invisible tick, um, and there was one in the spy in the queues. What is an invisible tick? An invisible tick in the opposite direction of something you're in is give you confirmation will continue in the right direction. An invisible tick in the direction that you're in the train is confirmation that it is done in the move. The invisible tick went down in the queues. That means this long will hold. So that was a good sign for those of you that are long. As you see, it's trying to come in and holding. Either way, you're in this all day to get it to the target. The target in the QQQs today is 105. You're in it all day to get there. I don't know if the strength of the market will actually hold to push it up to that level today. If not, we will still be bullish today. Then we may need a second gap up tomorrow to follow through. Could be medium, could be neutral, could be large. The market may struggle a little bit here until it situates itself. Again, why? As I was just discussing, what happened yesterday with the third gap down in a row, which was a large gap down in the market yesterday where the market opened, was an anomaly. Now. Every chart that was in the market was affected by this yesterday. There was no thing that traded in the U.S. market yesterday that was not affected by this gap down that happened. In fact, right now I'm looking at the volume here. I didn't even look at that. Look at that. I, look at that. That number, you can't fathom the amount of the number. Look at that. 150829863. Wow. Look at the volume that was in the market yesterday. In fact, let's look at the volume that was in the first 15 minutes. 30% of the volume on the day happened in the first 15 minutes of the day when what happened? The market opened and swooshed and flipped the swoosh. Look at that. 495-9145. So 30% of the overall total volume of the day yesterday in the market because of the situation in the gap happened in the first 15 minutes of the day. This is an anomaly, and let's look up the definition of an anomaly. <clears throat> Here, this is it. Oh, this is amazing. This is it. Listen, is everyone paying attention? When I looked at this, and I saw this last night, and I also saw it yesterday morning, and I also looked at charts today, and I scanned through every chart on the planet this morning, scanning for stuff to do, which I only found one thing which I wasn't crazy about. I said, boy, every chart now looks funky donkey. Why? Because of what happened yesterday in the market. It affected everything in the U.S. market. So every chart now looks skewed and will take time to situate itself. We must be picky poos every day this week when we trade. And I didn't trade yesterday and I didn't even do anything today. But Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we are not doing anything unless it is perfect. Why? Because what the market did yesterday, which we'll remember the date, even though we didn't trade or do anything, which I told you not to do, and it was a good decision because the market could have been halted. The market could have been halted, and we could have been stuck in something. And actually, there were no good bearish gaps, not even the market, because it flipped. But anyways, when I looked at this, I said, you know what, this is an anomaly. Okay, so what's the actual definition for dictionary.com of an anomaly? This is absolutely 100% true. It is an odd, peculiar, peculiar or strange condition, situation, quality, etc. An incongruity or inconsistency. Abnormal does not fit in. Irregularity. And that accurately describes the gap down in the market yesterday. Why? Because the market is still in a bullish uptrend. What happened was unexpected yesterday. Has not changed the trend of this chart, which is actually peculiar. Because normally if you see something gapping down three days in a row... In general, I'm generalizing here. I'm generalizing here. But normally, if you'd see something fall and drop and gap down threes in a row or have a big gap down, you'd say, boy, that thing is weak. Something's wrong with it. If you looked at a stock, you'd say, something's wrong with that stock because in three days, it's lost value. And you would say to yourself, because if you want to go back here from Thursday on 820, the high of the day on 8, at 820, well, now let's look at the open. The open was 109.11, okay? And the low yesterday, after the bounce, here, let's just figure it out exactly. 
minus 84, 74. Phew. Market has lost, you know, basically 25% or 24% or 23 some percent or whatever within three days of trading from the open of Thursday to the low of the bounce off of yesterday. Not today, but since then. So when you see something like that, you say to yourself, wow, you know, that looks bearish, but the fact is it's not. And that is what is peculiar. It is peculiar that it happened and even more so, why? Because the market is still in an uptrend and many, 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 many people now have lost 100% conviction that the market is going to hold the trend or is even still in an uptrend at all, which I'm telling you it is. But I'm telling you that it, it, when I saw this, the only way I could accurately describe it, which is correct, is that it is an anomaly because it is something that is unusual, a strange condition, odd, peculiar, and an inconsistency in this chart, in the trend. But you will see things like this happen over the course of your life when you trade. You always see something, and that's what we talked about yesterday too. It's exciting to trade because you will always learn something new and see something. And what will be even more amazing is when the market continues and makes a new high, which to be honest with you, is still going to happen this year in 2015. I just don't know the timing of it. And that will be even more phenomenal for people that don't understand it. And again, guess what? All along the way, every day I talk, I've been talking for a year now or more about the fact that when the market does get over that resistance level of what we talked about, it was like 114 something, something, whatever, it's going to blow in the QQQs and rally immediately because there's nothing past that number to get up to the 120 number in the previous high in the Qs. And now it could almost go straight up vertical over the Qs and over the SPY whenever it sets up to do it. I said it was going to do that all along. I always said that's how I saw it happening. I actually saw it. I saw it. I just saw it, and it's still going to happen. And you know what? Maybe that's why it's going to happen. Maybe that's why it's actually going to go like this. And anyone that's not long will miss it. And then that's what it's going to create, the buying to come in late, where people are going to realize then, oh, my lanta, the market really is higher. Quick, 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 let's get in. And then the market just goes and goes and goes and goes and goes, and the bullish market lasts into 2016, all of 2016, however long it lasts. That may be why I, this is happening this way. Now, I did not see this happening. I see what is going to happen, which I'm telling you is still setting up to happen. But again, this is an anomaly. This is an anomaly. And it's very unusual, but it accurately describes what happened in the market yesterday. And now every chart in existence, I mean, let's just look at some of our favorites. Every chart in the world. Let's look at all of them. Let's look at Netflix. Let's look at Apple. This actually doesn't look that weird here. JC Penny. Let's look at Apple. It's mostly going to be market stocks, but everything looks somewhat strange. Apple actually looks like it was stronger than the market yesterday. This, this chart is still fine. This is, you know, this is really challenging for people that still have conviction because people are in fear now. P people are in fear. People are in fear. When fear comes over you, you do things that you would normally do. You make quick decisions. You make, you're, you're apprehensive. You make fast, quick decisions that you wouldn't normally make. You're floating along and you're, you're in, the, in the cruise ship and you went on this cruise and you paid all this money and you're having a fabulous time and all of a sudden there's a leak. There's a leak in the cruise ship and now you don't know what to do. You don't know how big the leak is or how small the leak is, but as you know, there's been many, many stories out there in the last, I don't know how many years, of these cruise ships like sinking and everyone dying and, and, and then the panic comes over you and there's disorganization everywhere and you didn't go up when they had the lifeboat meeting and you know you should have, but you were having a drink in the cabana pool area. And you said, screw it, everything's fine. We're only going to Alaska. But all of a sudden, you realize that there's a possibility that you might sink. In a panic mode, you jump out in a lifeboat. And as it turns out, there was no reason for you to do that. And they keep going without you. And they fix the leak and you're stuck in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean by yourself. And your cell phone doesn't work, you have no reception, and you should have never jumped out in the lifeboat because actually they fixed the leak. This place, this cruise place was more organized than the last one. And they, there was no reason to panic, okay? And this is sometimes what happens when fear sets into you and panic, you make apprehensive, quick decisions that you cannot make. And, and, and then they work against you. <clears throat> this is...
This chart's still fine too. I don't know what to say, but it is. Let's look at Tesla. the worst of any of them but still probably will be fine so let's just go back here very quickly to the market nice call I made here in, in the market long today is anybody in it you're gonna be in it all day I don't know where it goes exactly it could get to the target if not you're still gonna make money in this call who's in the market long anyone an aggressive call for me to make here anyways the market is higher we'll have to see how it plays out the rest of the week every day counts now that I'll tell you every day I get up and I'll be looking at this hmm 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 you could almost rate the market gaps every day just to get the confirmation and the conviction but as I was describing with the cruise ship leak you cannot panic okay you cannot panic there was nothing but panic coming in yesterday. Panic all over the U.S. market. It was an anomaly. There was not a valid reason for the panic. And actually, there you go. That's another thing that you can think in your mind, too. Listen, this will help you. If there is a valid reason for the panic, go with it. But there wasn't. Okay? Like, if, if somebody, God forbid, okay, does something crazy where there is an activity or an action of violence that happens on the planet that results in the beginning of a war for the world. You have my permission to panic, okay? That did not happen yesterday. There was no valid, rational reason for the panic, okay? So if something happens, and when I made the original call last year in October of 2014, and I said, barring a world war, the market will be bullish in 2015. It is playing out to be that way. And I said the market would make a new high. It already did that. The targets have changed now because what happened yesterday was a complete and total anomaly as far as the timing of the targets, but the overall targets for the market, for the bullishness of the market long is still in play timing of that has changed now because what happened yesterday was an anomaly and that will help you when you're you get in that panic mode is there a reason that this is happening okay it has to do with the quality of the gap rating and your and logic okay and I did rate the gap I mean I rated it and it, and it rated a 16 so there was no reason to short that gap yesterday and you know what it didn't work and one of the things actually that confirmed that that could be the low of the day actually in the market for the entire rest of the year of 2015 and could be for years to come is the fact that the market opened and swooshed. Now listen, I'm going to say this, this is very important. The market opened and swooshed and the swoosh reversed. I've never seen that in the market. I can't wait to find out if that really ends up being the low in the market for a long, long time. Because the fact is the market opened and swooshed. And 30% of the volume on the day came in into that. And it was completely 100% reversed. So that could be the low of the U.S. stock market for the rest of 2015 and for years. Because I've never seen anything like it. I've never seen anything like it. And there is meaning in that. Okay, there is significance in that. Does anyone want to tell me what the significance is before I tell you? Does anyone want to guess? Here, the market's long. I've already called it. Does anyone want to tell me what the significance is of the swish reversal that happened yesterday in the market? Conceptually, in your mind, what is, what is very significant about that? Just guess, and then I'll let everybody go for the day. Does anyone want to guess? Here, you're almost over the high if you're in this long. Am I talking to myself? I mean, I don't mind talking to myself, but 
It would be nice if I was talking to somebody else. Galahad said it closed green. That's true, but I want conceptually to ex what else besides it? Asia is leading. That has nothing to do with the swoosh. Jaguar Pa says it shows who is contr in control. Yes, that is correct. That is correct. And line 38 says sellers capitulation. No more sellers left. I wouldn't say there's no more sellers left. I wouldn't say that at all. But there was capitulation. Haas 007, I already answered that question 10 hours ago. I found it up here in my scanner, on my thing, in this jiggy, in here, this morning. Boom. Really, you, no, no one was wrong in anything they said, okay? The person that got it the best really was Jaguar Pa about the control. Trader Gal saying, I think the three-day drop had to do with China oil, Fed, etc. as the news says. Once people realize it's not a crash, all will return. Galahad said, close green buyers in control. Yes, nice call in the market. It is about the control, but I want to go back here to the original thing. No one really, really, really said what I was really thinking in my brain. If you could see my brain. Although everyone was right in some regard, no one was wrong. You made money on my call today in DSW, I'm glad. If you made $1,750 on my call today in DSW, then once again, you took some crazy, crazy amount of size. So I hope you know what you're doing. Um, okay. This is just amazing. <gasps> High in here is 94.23. Low is 84.74 in this one bar. One, two, five, ten, ten. Look at that. Look at that volume. So this, the market open and swoosh. So, again, somebody said about the control, that's true. It closed green, that's true. But what I really was, was, was thinking, what was so amazing about this, and very, very significant, is not just the show of the control to hold the market up, which it is doing, but the fact is that this really actually is real. This actually really did really for real happen, okay? So to reverse this, $10 bar to the downside, forget the gap, okay? Just, I'm just talking about this whoosh. This, this swoosh could have opened here and swooshed. Pretend the swoosh is anywhere. It just opened and swooshed. The swoosh itself, that's all I'm talking about, is what I find the most significant from yesterday. Not the gap down, not the three-day gap downs we've had, not the drop, not, not anything. I, the most significant thing that I the takeaway from yesterday is, number one, the anomaly, which I just described to you. The anomaly, and you know what? The swoosh is part of the anomaly now that I'm talking. So the anomaly that happened in the market with the gap, but the most significant thing that happened yesterday to me, Melissa Armon, you would never know this if you didn't know what a stock swoosh was, which I invented, but it tells you so much information. The biggest, most significant thing that happened yesterday in my mind when I analyzed this, which I'm doing with you live right now, so it's good, and I'm taping it. I think I'm taping it, yeah. Um, is that the market opened and swooshed, and then that swoosh, did not hold and actually got bought, which I have never seen happen in the market and very, 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 very rarely ever happens ever in a stock. So for that to happen yesterday is the most significant thing that happened of yesterday's anomaly is that the market opened and swooshed. You would never know what a swoosh is unless you did my golden gap class. You would never know the significance of that unless you would be here with me and trading and understand what that is. It is about the bull stepping in, but it's even more than that. It's the fact that this was real. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. This really actually happened, and it was actually selling, and it really did sell off $10 here in 
60 seconds and there's no getting around it and that bar itself is a swoosh that bar is bearish i'm not arguing that case it fell off a planet in 60 seconds we watched it happen live and we just watched it breathless but i'm telling you the fact that it flipped aggressively and did not hold that sell-off okay is extremely significant because it meant that the people not only showed the force of the control which jaguar paw pointed out not only did they show the force of the control that they were in control which is still the bulls but they were prepared to step in immediately so it's not like listen this is really important does anyone listen to anything i say it's not just the fact that that we reversed and closed green yesterday and held in the gap down mullishly it's the fact that the people that were in control had no hesitation to step in as almost if it was a planned action do you understand what i'm saying it's almost as if it was a planned action. Now that planned action could have taken place between 7 a.m. and 8.15 when the gap down happened. Do you understand? Like it's that, it's almost as if the, 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 it's not just the control that came in that held the market, it's the fact that that swoosh reversed in, mi in minutes, in seconds. It's, it was, that is, it's almost as if it was a planned action. Do you understand what I'm saying? That, my friends, is huge, okay? and very rare and an anomaly in something that you see like this in a chart. But what that says to me, it's giving me the confirmation and conviction that there is no chance, no chance, no chance of failure that the market isn't higher because the people in control not only were willing to stay in control, but had absolutely no hesitation despite a $10 bar down with over a million dollars in volume in 60 seconds to come in with all the force of money on the planet that exists within the force of their vaults and buy, which was to them an opportunity to buy more of the market, to make more money, the billions of dollars that these plate people make because it is so important and, and their plan of action to continue to rally the market. Do, do you understand what I'm saying here? Like it's, do you understand what I'm saying? Because this swoosh could have come in or any drop or whatever, and the market could have sloshed around here and then it could have rallied over the high and closed green. This could have, this, the bar in the day, which you can't tell from here, could have looked like 7,000 different things on the intraday chart, but it didn't, it looked like this. And I'm telling you, this is where, this is, the, this is the most significant thing that happened yesterday of anything that happened, besides the anomaly of the gap down. But it's a combination, and you only see swooshes and gaps, and quality gaps anyways, or gaps right on the cusp, which you could have, you could have, you could have said this was on the cusp, but really I never would have shorted it. But anyways, to make a long story short, this here is significant for the reason I just described, because this could have flipped and held green on the day and not transpired like this. It could have done this, and then it could have gone boop, boop, doop, boop, doop, boop, doop, boop, doop, and then rally, 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 and had just a nice controlled rally. Instead, it opened and it swooshed, and it immediately, the buying came in with no hesitation and pushed it over and failed on the swoosh. <clears throat> and actually, I'm seeing this here now. I can't make this stuff up if I tried. Look, this actually set up in here. Triggered, flipped, failed. Look. I just see that. I just saw that now here. I didn't even realize that until now. Let me just look at this buy. Same thing happened here. You have this here, failed, look. It was more aggressive in the queues though noticeably aggressive but this still swooshed too and then this hit failed this is this is a better chart to teach the lesson here today though <clears throat> and it, it's clear to me here it's clear to me here now in the qqqs and it matters more and there's more of an impact and the reason is because the spy has been more bullish than the queues all of the last two years 
So this has more of an impact because the fact is that if anything needs more strength than anything else, it's the QQQs because the QQQs have not made an all-time high yet. And the SPY already has long ago, even last year. So the reality is that there's more significant in watching what's happening right now in the QQQ ETF than the SPY if you want to determine what to do and there isn't a matchup, although there is, okay, then you would watch this chart for clues like we just discussed here. And all of these things are clues. Again, how do I know? Because I'm reading and describing you the price action. This is one of the benefits of really taking my class and being with me. And I am so grateful that I have a good eye to even see these things. I truly, truly, truly believe now that I just analyzed this here this morning that this is definitely the low for the, one, for the year, for the rest of the year in the market. There's only September, October, November, December left. You don't buy gap downs, but you're not a hedge fund institution and that was bought. The market is higher, still is setting up to make a new high yet this calendar year, even though there's only four months left. Will the targets be hit? I don't know if they'll be hit by December 31st. We will possibly have, again, I saw it, you know, this is just the timing, like in, in, in October of 2014, I saw what was going to happen. And then the year kept going and we were saying bullish. Now we had this anomaly. It's like the year I thought we'd have in 2015 for the tremendous bullish year is pushing into 2016. Although we really have had a bullish year in the market. We have, we have. And no matter how, what anyone says, we're still in an uptrend. And it's tough for people to see. It's tough for people to see. I understand that. But as I said, you can't panic and jump out into the lifeboat if, if, if they're gonna fix the leak. Because you may end up out there with no cell phone service and nowhere to go and no food and no one to find you. And they don't even know that you're out there because they just can't even see you. The boat's too big. A lot of panic that came in yesterday, but there was no hesitation. <laughs> no hesitation from the money. And whether it was a planned action that happened early in the morning or planned action that was planned out to happen at any time that those price levels happen to be hit, if it ever were, if they ever were hit, who knows? Who knows? Who knows how far in advance that planned action took place? But I will tell you that there was no hesitation, and I've never seen anything like it. And my call is still going to come out to play through. I'm not on television yet, but honestly, I wish I wish that I was today, right now, and even yesterday on Monday, because I would have been the only person saying the things I'm saying now. I would have been the only person talking about swooshes because I invented it and no one else knows what the swoosh is but me. And, and, and you know what? People would follow me and follow me and follow me and eventually what I'm saying will turn out to be true. But I'm taping this here. We'll put it on YouTube. It'll be out there in the universe for people to go back and listen to. I really, really just, this stuff is so good, people. It's reading the price action. It's amazing to me. Um, let's see here. Trader Gals talking about the Qs went from 114 in eight to 85 in less than 30 trading days. I don't, I don't know what that has to do with anything. Where you're coming up with the 30 trading days? I don't know why you're, why you're saying 30 trading days is something that is something. Um, in fact, it dropped to April 2014 price. I don't know if it did or not, but again, I don't know why that matters. Uh, you listen, but the fact is that the drop had, had to have hit a lot of people stop, so a lot of people lost money. Did people lose money from that drop-off yesterday? Yes, people may very well have lost money from that drop-off yesterday. Now remember, in reference to overnights, we're talking about stops. There, there is no stop. You have a paper stop or a mental stop, but this is what I was talking about, about the idea of the control. All right, I'm going to say one more thing before I let everybody go. Let's just say Trader Gal or any of you are in a trade and an anomaly happens like happened yesterday. It could have happened in any stock that we were, could have been long in yesterday in the market or the market itself. Now this just describes, again, what I'm talking about, about jumping out in a lifeboat when the ship hasn't said it's going to sink yet. An anomaly comes in. 
An anomaly that doesn't have a reason and a gap that you rate that turns out not to be something Melissa Arma would short. You already are down. There's nothing you can do. Are you listening to me? You already are down. There is nothing you can do. You are down. You are down when you get up out of the bed in the morning because of the gap down in the market. You are in a paper stop, so your stop isn't hit. Theoretically, it's through the number. What are you going to do, okay? You're now in damage control mode because you're down. And as Trader Gal pointed out, you actually might be down a lot. It's not your fault. This was an anomaly. What do you do? As an intelligent, rational human being who has taken the Golden Gap class, you could call me on the phone and ask my advice, or you could listen to me in the room, or you could sit and rate the gap. When you rate the market gap or the stock gap of the bearish gap of something you're in, if you're in a long position, and determine that it is not a good bearish gap, you would know that it wouldn't follow through. Even though you might not believe it, because you're so consumed with fear, because your account is absolutely upside down, you would still not want to panic because whether you killed the trade at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 9.30 in the market open, you are down. Therefore, go with the gap rating. The gap rating tells you that the gap isn't going to follow through and you can't short it on the day. You believe in the gap rating system and you have conviction. When you get up out of bed in the morning and watch it, you see the market, and in fact, here, did anything else swoosh? Hold on, I didn't even check that. Hold on, I didn't even look at that. Wait a minute. Did anything else swoosh yesterday besides the market? No. Let's look at Netflix. I, I, if any, but I'm not gonna look at every chart in the world. No, I can tell this didn't either. But if, you, if, if somebody finds something that swooshed yesterday besides the market and flips, let me know. I'm not going to look through every chart. But anyways, the market did. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying. You get up out of bed in the morning, you're down. You see the swoosh come into the market. Not in your stock, but in the market, for example. Or, or the market, if you're in the market long or whatever. But you rated the gap. You're trying not to panic. You're trying not to panic because there's nothing you can do. It's out of your control. You didn't do anything wrong. It's an anomaly. You have to make a decision now and use your head. It's damage control, okay? So what do you do? The swoosh comes in. You wait. You wait to see if the gap rating is going to follow through and not end up being a short, which is what the rating tells you. You wait to see if the market's going to hold because you know the uptrend is still intact. How would you know that by taking the trends class? You wait to see if everything you know, all the knowledge, is going to play out to be true. And instead of panicking, as it turns out, the swoosh is reversed. The market rallies. You wait. And as the day goes on, you're realizing you're going to be okay. And that the money that you were down, you're no longer down. You could be even back to be up again or flat. And if you had panicked or not had the gap rating system or lost control or didn't hone the conviction and focus on the knowledge, you took a huge hit, which you would have taken at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. or if you sold out during the market swoosh. There was no way to avoid what happened. It was an anomaly. But when it did, you were a highly evolved, intelligent being that used your amazing brain and made the correct choice. And this has nothing to do with intuition. This is about you better take seriously what's going on here now. And you are down a lot. And what are you going to do? Well, you can panic, but that isn't going to prevent you from losing. If you had rated the gap, however, I'll tell you right now, and the gap had rated 24 points, I would have sold out of it as soon as I could. Or you wait for the open. But I'll tell you, when you get in something and you're upside down, the best thing you can do is what? Wait. Wait for the first five minutes of the day to play out because that is the most significant thing that I taught you. No one knows how to read it like me. 
And even if you're in something in panic mode, you can wait for the first five minutes of the day. It's not going to kill you unless you get up and rate that gap. And that gap turns out to be some amazing, incredible, fabulous, phenomenal gap because it could fall $3 from the time you rated at 7 a.m. until 9 a.m. And you could be worse off. But that was not the case in the market yesterday. That was not the case in any gap down yesterday. And that's why we didn't short yesterday. Otherwise, you can wait five minutes for the market of the stock to open and read it the way that I taught you and determine what to do. And you go with the gap rating. Okay? The way that I just described is not what most people do. They do not know my system. They don't know how to read swooshes. The first five minutes of the day, they don't know how to read gaps. And most people in the planet are in fear and panic. They panic when they're down. And some people panic when they're up. We've had this discussion before. It's crazy. People sometimes panic when they're up. And people sometimes panic when they're down. And, you know, costs, I'm trying to be tough on you this week because it's your first week trading after the trial and you've only done a portion of the class and you're making sick amounts of money every day, but we haven't had a great gap all week. And I question myself because I say you're just pressing the button with 10,000 shares and I'm concerned about you because I understand people. I understand the human brain. I understand confidence and conviction and risk and fear and greed and I get it. And I'm telling you right now, the most important thing you could do it's focus on the knowledge. It's beyond the money even. Because if you do, in the long run, you will make millions of dollars in the market over your life or even in a year or even if you want to at any point in time, you've got to listen to what's going on. Did people lose money yesterday? Trader Gal is right. They did. They lost their shirts. And I hope that your brother or sister or uncle, whoever that was doing mutual funds, didn't lose his shirt. But the reality is that if you did what I just said, you didn't lose your shirt. If you waited in the first five minutes of the day, you would have saw the reverse swoosh and you would have saw it reverse. And you would have rated the gap down in the morning. I know you could have held out and waited five more minutes. Because at the end of the day, that isn't going to make a difference if you are clobbered and something happened that was an anomaly it was out of your control. And will there be times when you're in trades that things happen out of your control and you lose money? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. And that is part of trading. But in the long run, it doesn't happen that often. Yesterday was an anomaly. And... I wish I would have been on national television to discuss it in the way that we just did, but I did take the discussion this morning and that was a perfect way to describe it. But the most significant takeaway from yesterday and this week is that we have to be very picky on everything we short from now until Friday. The market and every stock on the planet has to situate itself. I'm okay with the fact I didn't do anything today. If you shorted DSW made money today, great. I don't think anyone should have taken any sizable risk in that though. And I don't think anyone should have done the second call, and I didn't make it. And in reference to the overall day of yesterday and how it transpired, the most significant takeaway is the fact that the market opened and swooshed and reversed the swoosh. I've never seen the market do a bearish swoosh. I've been trading now for seven years. Not only that, I've never seen a swoosh like that reverse itself, and that to me shows not only who's in control, not only that the chart is still bullish in the market, but the fact that there was almost – to me, as we watched it trade out and seeing it now flat, going back and looking at it flat, it is almost as if it was a planned action because of the aggressiveness of it. And I'm telling you that that is really, really important. Because it means not only are we higher, but there's almost no stopping us. Because if something like that can happen, which is a $10 swoosh that came into the market from a gap down from the market dropping three days and everybody panicking on the planet, if the powers that be just choose to buy at that point, and not only that, had a plan of action to do so, I'm telling you that there's nothing stopping that money. There is nothing stopping that money. That money is full force, full on, full, full on, like full on Melissa Armel. And I'm telling you, there's nothing stopping it. There's nothing stopping it. There's nothing stopping me from continuing to make money trading. There's nothing stopping me from getting on national television. There's nothing stopping me from getting better as a trader and a teacher for you. Don't let anything stop you. There's nothing stopping the money in the market. There's nothing stopping the bullishness in the market, and don't be against it. And if you want to panic because something happens that's out of your control, go ahead. But I'm telling you, sometimes if you wait and you just step back and you take a five-minute break, if you just take a two-minute break, if you just take if you just take a break for five seconds, you can get a clearer perspective. I'm not saying take go to back to bed and take a nap and come up at noon. I'm saying just to pull back for five minutes 
and I have this thing, I made this thing up. I don't really use it that much in the room, but I've been using it with my friends and people. It's called the 24 hour rule. We can maybe make a five minute rule. Well, we're, gonna, we're gonna do a five minute rule. We're gonna do a five minute rule in the market if something happens and you're caught in something. But you can do a 24 hour rule actually too with, with trades. I don't know if you can afford to stay through it for 24 hours. But I have this thing called a 24 hour rule. Something happens to you and you get really upset, you get mad at someone, you have a big argument. Tom, are you listening? And you want to yell at the person and scream at the person. You've never been angry with them in their life. And you know what? You should just wait 24 hours. You shouldn't say something you're going to regret because you know what? You could say something you regret because you're really, really emotional upset. you got to have the 24-hour rule in play. If you get up tomorrow morning, you're still really, really mad at that person for something they said or something they did, then fine. Go off on them. Let it fly. But sometimes we get really emotional. And if we don't wait 24 hours, we might say something that we really, 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 really regret. And then there's, there's damage done. And that damage may not be able to be repaired. So you've got to have the 24-hour rule. I think it applies to business and personal stuff. And maybe we make the five-minute rule for things that happen when people are in things that are anomalies. And because you don't know, five minutes is like 24 hours in the market. Gallup said, yes, he agrees. Yep. I don't think I've been talking about that in the room because we're never together for 24 hours. Uh, but we really the 24-hour rule I made up this year and we have to do it I mean and I made it up for myself I made it up for myself because there was something that I said to someone and then I then I made it up and I'm like you know what I gotta I'm applying the 24-hour rule I, I said something then that later I regretted and I was like you know what crap 24-hour rule now starting now because then I regretted it and then I had to apologize to the person because I can get emotional myself and say things that sometimes I don't mean if I'm upset about something and this this whole thing has been like that for me and so the 24-hour rule is really in play for me now with the whole television stuff like 24 hours 24 hours 24 hours but if in 24 hours I still feel the same way then I know that I'm right and therefore there it goes Seattle Trader says totally agree Jaguar Paz says totally agree Greg Gassi says count to 10 but I'm telling you sometimes you need more than 10 sometimes you need 24 hours that's what I'm saying Greg Gassi someone really has you on the rail and so or something really happened that totally sets you off track. And you know what? I'm not married, but I know a lot of you are. And those of you that have spouses that have been married for even more than 24 months know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm a baby when it comes to relationships because I've never, never been married. I'm like Cinderella, just out there dating. But I'm telling you right now, those of you that have been married know what I'm talking about because I can't even imagine. That I'm so... You know, I can't even imagine what it's like to be married to someone for, for more than 24 seconds, let alone 24 hours or 24 months or 20 years. Those of you that are married, you this is marriage. I mean, relationships. You you And you're living with a person. And then you, you're living with a person. You know what? It's really good, actually, if you're living with a person, if you have a big house or you have a vacation house. Because you know what? You could leave in 24 hours and just go leave for 24 hours. You could go to the other wing of your house if you live in a mansion. Or if you have a house in the Hamptons and you have an apartment in Manhattan, one of you can go there and you can leave for 24 hours and you come back and you make up. If you live in the same house and it's small, it's tough. But I can't even imagine because I'm not married and I've never been married. But if you have a spouse, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or if you're even living with someone in a relationship, you know, that 24 hours is, is tough if you're in close quarters with the people. But you really got to almost have the 24 hour rule there. Trader Gal hit 35 years. Oh, my lanta. I hope you have a big house we can spread out when you have arguments. <laughs> you have a you have, to have a marriage last, you have to have some sense of self-control. Well, that's why you have the 24-hour rule. That's what I'm saying. Because when you're angry, you can, you can, you can say you want self-control all day long, but it doesn't mean you're going to have it. Because emotions are high. Trader Gal has a huge mansion, and it's a pain to clean, but it's great. Um, let me just see who else is writing stuff. Uh, Spy and Dow right on the day. Q's holding. Let me just look. Yeah, the Q's are holding here. Let's see if this is holding the stop, too. Yes. So everything's holding the stops I gave. In fact, you could buy more of the Spy here. You could buy more of the cues here. I told you to give the, put the stops at the right place. The cues do look stronger than the spy right now, which they did yesterday into the close as well. Let's just briefly look at what we have tonight, and then I'll everybody go. Great discussion today. I I I'm exhausted though, and I really didn't have enough caffeine this morning. <clears throat> I don't see anything of any significance tonight. Let me just check tomorrow.
there tomorrow. Hold on. This, this is not tonight. Tomorrow morning is A and F and the FPR. Okay. Constantly went over this in the class. Here. There you go. All right, just wait for tomorrow morning, and you get up and you see it on your scanner. All right, so these are the watches for tomorrow. And class, you are taking an extreme amount of risk to be to make that money that you made today in that extremity. All right, have a great day, everyone. Good discussion in here today. Amazing discussion in here today. I hope you learned a lot. Uh, this is Melissa Armour with the Stock Swoosh. Have a great day, everyone. I will see you all tomorrow morning bright and early. I would love a good one, but we really, really going to be picky poos the rest of the week because of what happened in the market. It's fine. We'll just do our thing, and we'll continue to do our thing. All right. Have a great day, everyone. You're welcome.